Guess what time it is? It's time for the finale! The thrilling, shocking, crazy finale of this story! Oh my god, are you as excited as I am? Whee! Hey everybody, welcome back. It is time, it is finally time for the finale of this fanfiction story. I am pumped. I wanted to plan a special outfit for today, but we're going with Sailor Moon because why the fuck not? I, like I said, I wanted to like go all out for this, but so I'm going to read, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, but I want to try and like, you know, get in the details because this is like what the whole story has been all about. I'm going to leave in a little bit of the details and then I'm going to give my final thoughts. Oh my God. Here we go. I am ready. I am so ready. Holy fuck. My hair is crazy. I should let, I should have let it dry. Whatever. I was excited to make this. Chapter 18. The next morning I woke up to something licking my face. I opened my eye and saw a black and white face looking at me. Yee! Well, hello, pretty kitty, I said to Krista, picking her up and kissing her head. The side door opened and Maskey walked in. Morning, beautiful, he said. Hello, I said. <laughs> I looked at the clock on the wall. It was three in the afternoon. Oh, wow, I've been asleep for a long time, I said. Yeah, everyone is just starting to wake up, Maskey said. I need to get ready. The show starts at six and I have to be there early to set up, I said. I hopped out of bed. Maskey laughed. You didn't even bother to change, he said. It was like two in the morning by the time we got back, he said. I said. He laughed. Now get out. I need to change, I said, pushing him through the door and shutting it. I pulled the dress off and grabbed the outfit I was wearing for the show. I pulled on the black boots and pulled up on the lace-up boots. Krista batted at my laces and hissed at them. I laughed. You are just adorable, I said. I grabbed the top and pulled it off the hanger. One of the side doors opened again. <laughs> Hey, Naomi, can we talk? Jeff asked, walking in. He stopped and looked at me. He covered his eyes. I quickly covered myself with my shirt. Ever heard of knocking? I asked. I pushed him out and slammed the door shut, locking it. <laughs> I locked the other door, too. I cursed under my breath and put the shirt on. I looked at myself in the mirror. Jade was right. I do look good, despite the fact that I can see my stomach, I said. I put on the spiked choker necklace. I put my hair up in the red bow and pulled on the red belt. I grabbed my guitar and unlocked my main door and walked down the stairs. I set my guitar by the door. Hey, Ben, I said. Hey, he said. Have you been up all night playing video games, I asked. Yes, he said. I shook my head at him and walked to the kitchen. Lou and Jeff were sitting in the kitchen. Lou was reading and Jeff was sharpening a knife. Hey, Naomi, Lou said. Jeff dropped the knife and bolted out of the kitchen. <laughs> I looked at Lou. He feels bad about walking in on you, Lou said. I grabbed an apple from the fridge and bit into it. Honestly, hasn't he ever heard of knocking, I asked. Well, we never really had a sister growing up, so we just kind of barged into each other's rooms, Lou said. I rolled my eyes. I'm guessing you guys have patched things up, I said. A little, Lou answered. I threw the apple core in the trash. She must have gone to town on that fucking apple. Just like, it was like, just hammering into it. Like, oh my god. I walked out of the kitchen and sat on the couch. I picked up my phone. Leah sent me the address of the venue where we would be playing. All right, so she jumps on her bike and goes to the venue. And by the time she gets to the venue, it's five o'clock. The place was gargantuan. The stage was massive and there were a ton of seats. Hey, Naomi, a voice called. I looked over to see Nicole sitting behind a table that was covered in books. Hi, I said, walking over. I looked at the books. Is this, is this just the first one? I asked. She nodded. The second one is still in development. My mom keeps bugging me to finish it. I kind of started on a comic with my friend. My mom thought I wouldn't have enough time to do both, but I've got plenty of time left, Nicole said, setting up her laptop on the table. You take that everywhere with you, don't you? I asked. She nodded. I keep it safe, she said. She looked around. Where's Hoodie? Uh, er, Brian, I mean, Nicole asked. Everyone should be here soon, I said. She nodded. Oh, the girls are in the back getting ready, Nicole said. Thanks, see you in a bit, I said. I walked back to the stage behind it. There you are, Naomi, June said, running over. Hey, I said. I followed her to a dressing room with our band's name on it. I set my guitar on the stand. This is it, ladies, the big night, Jade said, brushing our hair out. Fuck you, Jade. We all nodded. I'm so nervous, Leah said. Yeah, same, June said. Oh, relax, we've played plenty of shows in front of people, Jade said. Yeah, but never in front of so many, and this is Naomi's first time, Leah said. I'm fine, don't worry, I said. So who's going first, I asked. Grace's band, Jade said. Eh, they won't get many votes after what happened last night, June said. I strummed my guitar. Hmm, what a shame, I said sarcastically. The girl snickered. A man with blonde hair, glasses, jeans, t-shirt, and clipboard walked in. All right, ladies, it's almost showtime, he said. Oh, Naomi, this is our producer, sponsor, and all that other good stuff, Nathan, Jade said. Hey, I said. What a pleasure to finally meet you, Miss Jansen, Nathan said. Are the effects for the last song in order, Leah asked. Yes, they are. Explosions and all, Nathan said. We had enough money in the budget for explosions, I asked. Oh yeah, we have loads of money, Jade said. Convenient. Our dad is the boss of one of the biggest companies in town and he helps us by... <laughs> and he helps us out by giving us money for our show's budget, June said. 
That's nice. With the first song, you girls will be underneath the stage. You'll start by playing underneath and I'll start the platform to have it move you onto the stage, Nathan said. That's good because the song we're playing first gets starts soft and gets louder, Jade said. And for the last song, Nathan started. Jade coughed and interrupted him. Uh, Naomi, why don't you go put on some black eyeshadow to give you more in <laughs> give you a more insane look? <laughs> June said, handing me a makeup kit. Okay, I said suspiciously. You know what? That's a good point. I'm gonna go put on some black eyeshadow and give myself a more insane look. Give me a minute. <laughs> What do you think? Do I look insane? What's insane is the fact that despite doing cosplay and stuff, I barely know how to do my makeup, but that's okay. Now that I look more insane, let's get back to reading this. Uh, Naomi, why don't you go put on some black eyeshadow to give you a more insane look, June said, handing me a makeup kit. Done. Hey, I said suspiciously. I walked out of the door and to the bathroom. I stood in front of the mirror and applied the eyeshadow. I walked back after a few minutes. Man, I bet Grace's band doesn't have the, sa the type of effects we do, Jade said. Explosions. Are you sure they're safe? I asked. Positive, June said. We sat in the back and talked. Let's go see how many people are out there, Leah said after a bit. We got up and walked to the front. The stadium was starting to get pretty packed. I instantly spotted everyone I knew because Ben was jumping up and down trying to get my attention. I waved. I'll be right back, I said. I walked over. You look so cool, Sally said. Black is a good color on you, Maskey said. I flushed red. Black is a good color on literally everybody. Black is like a universally good color. Like, Maskey, if you're gonna compliment anything about the girl, be like, oh, hey, I like your outfit, or I like the red, or I like the bow, I like your eyeshadow. Black is a good color on you. It's kind of like saying, I don't even know. It just, it's kind of like, eh but gotta give him props for trying. She goes, she says hi to everyone, goes backstage. They watch as Grace's sponsor announces her band. They walk on the stage and start the songs. And it's different because Jeff isn't with the group anymore. I had the urge to light her guitar on fire, but decided against it. They're good, Leah said. Not as good as us, I said. Halfway through the song list, they took a break. Grace walked over to us. What do you think? Don't I sound amazing? She asked, looking at herself in the mirror. Yeah, you sound just like a dying cow, I said. Jade, Leah, and June snickered. Even some of Grace's band members laughed. Once we win, Jansen, you and your band will be cut from the ranks, Grace said, walking away. Forget you, I yelled after her. We walked out back to our dressing room and sat down. I tuned my guitar. This is going to be one of the best shows we've played, Jade said. You bet, Leah said. I could hear Grace's band playing again and the crowd cheering. After 30 minutes, Nathan walked in. Okay, girls, start heading to the stage's elevator, he said. We've got this, I said as we walked the elevator. We can win it, Jade said. We all hugged. I'm so glad I got to meet you girls, I said. And we're glad we got to meet you, Leah said. We heard Grace's band end their final song and the crowd cheering. We got into our positions. As, new, as soon as Nathan hit the switch, we started playing. Woo! Oh, I don't like having makeup in my waterline. Oh. Chapter 19. The first song went great and everyone loved us. Big surprise. The light effects were spectacular and the acoustics were amazing. The adrenaline rush was contagious and then it came time to take our break. Ah, I can't wait to use the explosives, June squealed. Calm yourself, sis, Jade said, twirling her stick. I have never felt so alive before, I said. That's showbiz, girl, Leah said. Hey, how was your date with my brother, I asked her. Oh, it went great. Good, if he does anything to hurt you, tell me and I'll knock his block off, I said. We went back on stage and everyone cheered. Close to the end of our set, I had noticed half my family leave. I frowned, but kept going. The last song we played was Monster by Skillet and the fire effect for that was great. At the end, I thanked everyone for coming and walked off stage, but I noticed the girls weren't with me. Uh, hey guys, how would you like to, how would you like an encore song? June asked into her mic. The crowd roared and cheered. I froze. What was she up to, I thought. <laughs> Let's get our fearless leader back on stage, Jade yelled. Everyone cheered my name. I walked back on stage. What's going on, I asked. You'll see. Just start playing the beginning of What Have You Done, <laughs> Leah whispered. I nodded and played. Fog covered the stage as I played. Does your heart know that I'm alone? I sang softly at first, gradually growing, and then the greatest thing happened. I heard another guitar playing. I looked around and saw none other than Ben playing on a guitar next to me. He gave me a cheeky grin. I smiled and kept going. Then I heard a boy's voice. I know I better stop trying. You know that there's no denying. I won't show mercy on you now. Maskey had joined in singing into the microphone next to me. I know I should stop believing. I know that there is no retrieving. It's over now. What have you done? What have you done now? I've been waiting for someone like you. But now you are slipping away. What have you done now? Why? Why does fate make us suffer? There is a curse between us, between me and you. I kept on rocking. The fire started up again as Jeff stood next to me, singing his heart out. I couldn't believe they did this. Everyone was loving it, though. Would you mind if I killed you? Would you mind if I tried to close you in? turned into my worst enemy. You carry the ha your carry hate that I feel. It's over now. 
what have you done? What have you done now? I turned up the guitar amp just a bit to make things more exciting. Then a soft flute started playing and Sally stood next to Ben. The drums grew louder and Matt Hoodie was back playing a second drum set with Jade. I will not fall nor let it go. We will be free when it ends. I've been waiting for someone like you. But now you are slipping away. What have you done now? Why? Why does fate make us suffer? There's a curse between us, between me and you. I've been waiting for someone like you. But now you are slipping away. What have you done now? Why? Why does fate make us suffer? There's a curse between us, between me and you. Joshua had joined in at the last few choruses playing a bass with Leah, and Nicole was with June on the keys. I nodded to Nathan, who let loose the explosions and the fireworks. I smiled and got the craziest idea. People will think it's part of the show, I thought. My black wings appeared from my back and I flew a few feet in the air, <laughs> rocking the guitar. <laughs> the lights strobed and spun around the stage. On final chorus, I rocketed to the crowd, slamming the final chord loud as fire burst from the stage. <laughs> the crowd went crazy, cheering loudly and whistling. I folded my wings and they disappeared. We all bowed and hurried off the stage. I turned around with a straight look on my face. Please don't be mad, Naomi. It wasn't our fault. It was Tim's, June said, pointing to Maskey. I looked at everyone, staying silent. Say something, woman, Ben yelled. You all are the greatest, I cried and group hugged them. Phew, we thought you'd be mad at us, Jade said. Mad? How could I ever be mad at you? That was the greatest thing I've ever done. I had no idea you could all play instruments, I said. We've been secretly working on it, Ben said. I smiled and then started crying. What's wrong, Maskey asked. I looked at Jeff. After all this time with me being mean and cruel to you, you still helped me, I said. I hugged him, but just quickly as to not make Maskey jealous. Hey, anything to help. It beats singing with grace, Jeff said. You girls better get back on stage. They're about to announce the winners, Nathan said. June, Jade, Leah, and I hurried onto the stage. We've had a great display of music tonight, haven't we? One of the judges, Carla, said. The crowd cheered. But only you will pick the winners. By your cheers, the board behind us will light up to see how much you love the band, she explained. Let's hear it for Grace and the Rockets, Grace's manager said. People cheered and clapped, even a few jeered. The girls and I laughed. The board lit up and blinked wildly. Give it up for the Queens of Insanity, Nathan yelled. The girls and I held hands tightly. The crowd went crazy. The board lit up again, making a loud siren noise. Then it exploded. I wonder who the winner could be. There's no surprise, folks. The winner for this year's band battle, along with the beach and cruise trip with the family and friends, goes to Grace and the Rockets. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the Queens of Insanity, the judge yelled. We all squealed and hugged each other, crying happily. Grace and her group skulked off stage. Would you like to say anything, Nathan asked. The girls nodded to me. Sure, why not? I said. I took the mic. Wow. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank you all for coming out tonight. It's been rough practicing for this, but we all got through it, I said. The crowd... The crowed, C-R-O-W-E-D, clapped. I would like to thank my band members for this too. We have Jade on the drums, I yelled. Jade made a rocker sign and suck out her tongue. <laughs> Leah on the bass, I called. Leah jumped up and down waving. And June on the keys, I yelled. June bowed. I would also like to thank my friends for that last song. To be honest with you all, I had no idea that we were doing it. They gave me a great surprise. Come on out here, guys, I called. Everyone walked out on stage. Let me introduce you to the guy that helped me on the guitar. Ben, I said. Ben waved. Sally on the flute, I said. Sally curtsied. My twin brother Joshua helping Leah with the bass, I said. Joshua bowed. Nicole, one of my favorite people, helping June with the keys. Oh, by the way, she's a rising author and you can buy her book at the stand towards the entrance, I said. Nicole blew a kiss to the crowd. We have Brian assisting Jade on the drums, I yelled. Hoodie smiled and waved. We have Jeff on the vocals, I said. Jeff smiled and did a rocker sign. And last but certainly not least, my boyfriend Tim, also on vocals, I yelled. Maskey turned to me and kissed me. I flushed a deep red as a bunch of girls in the crowd cheered and a lot of guys whistled. And we have our wonderful band leader on guitar, Naomi. Jade yelled. I smiled and waved. Thank you all and have a great night, I yelled. Thanks for remembering that Maskey is your boyfriend. <laughs> Chapter 20. We walked off the stage. Well, girls, it's been so fun. We should hang out after we all get a week's worth of sleep, Jade said. We all laughed. Hey, Joshua, can you do me a favor and drive my bike home, I asked. Lucky for you, I walked here, so yes, I can, Joshua said. Thanks, bro, I said. We can use you guys in the band, June said. Maybe for encores, Ben said. Deal, Jade said. I smiled. Oh my gosh, look at that line, Nicole yelled, running to her stand. I smiled. Well, girls, I'll be seeing you at school in a few weeks, I said. We hugged. See you later, Naomi, June said. It's been real fun. By the way, you should wear black more often. It suits you, Jade said. I laughed. I thought she always wore black. Thank you for everything, Leah said. You're welcome, I said. The gang followed me out. So, we get to go on a beach trip, Sally asked as we walked down to the street. Yep, I said. As we all walked, we all laughed and joked around. I'm glad Nicole got some business for her stand, I said. Yeah, she really is a great author, Maskey said. You know what? Maskey asked. What? I asked. I haven't been to a circus in forever. What made you say that? EJ asked. That big white van over there, she said. I froze and looked. There it was. Vladimir's Circus of Dark Monsters and Illusions. Oh no, I said. Oh no what? Jeff asked. 
Lately, everywhere I've gone, that van has been following me, I said. We all continued to walk. I looked behind me every few seconds to see it slowly following us. Then something quick, then something zipped past our heads. Quickly, everyone run, I yelled. We ran down the street, the van tailing us. Sally screamed as Annette ensnared her and EJ, dragging them to the van. I skidded to a stop and went to help, but remember Adrian's warning. Don't help, just run, she, had, she urged. I shook my head as ran as fast as I could. My black wings appeared again and I took off into the air. Another net snagged Toby. Help me, Toby yelled. I stopped mid-flight and shot a fireball straight at the van, but it just kept moving. Is it made out of some fire-resistant metal, I yelled. I don't know, Jeff yelled. Maskey and Hoodie were out of harm's way by teleporting every which way, trying to confuse whoever was trying to kidnap us. Clayton, I know you're the fastest out of all of us. If we get caught and you don't, tell Slender Dad what happened. I yelled. Clayton nodded, dodging a net. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a net got Jeff. He instantly cut it away with his knife. Jeff, help! Lou yelled. Lou had been ensnared. Lou, hang on! Jeff yelled. I threw another attack at the van to try and slow it down, but nothing worked. As Jeff was trying to save Lou, a net snagged him too, but this one was made out of wire. I can't cut through, Jeff yelled. I watched as they both got dragged away into the van. I dodged, I dodged as an electric net went by my head. Brian, no! Maskey yelled. Annette had gotten Hoodie. Whoever was in the van had recognized Maskey and Hoodie's teleport patterns. I flew down and grabbed Maskey and flew up just as Annette landed where he had been standing. Clayton, get help, I yelled. Got it, he yelled, dodging nets left and right. He veered off into the woods. I dived and ducked as more electric nets tried to ensnare me. Naomi, you can't do this forever and hold on to me, Maskey said. He was right. With the last net I dodged, I lost my grip on him and he fell. I screamed as a net caught him in midair and the van took him. I dodged more nets and burned more that got too close. I flew faster trying to get into the woods, but I felt something prick my leg. I cried out in pain and pulled out whatever hit me. A tranquilizer dart. I felt woozy but kept going. I wasn't about to get caught. More darts hit me, but I shook them off and kept going. A loud noise, like a cannon going off, sounded, and a ball and chain wrapped itself around my legs, bringing me to the ground. No! I yelled, flapping my wings as hard as I could to try and get away. But a dart hit me right in the chest, and I lost all consciousness and collapsed as a net fell over me. When I woke up, it was dark and I couldn't see a thing. H Hello? I called. I heard circus music playing. And now, ladies and gentlemen, what you've all been waiting for, the one thing you can't see anywhere else, the demon girl Naomi, a man announced. The curtain was pulled up and light invaded my vision. I blinked and looked around. I was in a cage in the middle of a ring and around me all my friends were in cages too. I gasped. A man holding a staff, wearing a tailcoat, top hat, black pants and leather shoes walked over to my, to my cage. Welcome to the circus kid. You're in my world now, he said laughing maniacally. And that, my friends, is the end of the book. As per tradition, this book ends on a cliffhanger. We did it! We got through it! Woo! Whew. That was, that was an endeavor. That was something. Holy moly. Whew. Okay, so we all knew that they were going to win the band battle. Like, that's just obvious. Considering how self-serving this book is, we all knew that they were going to win the band battle. I understand, like, why she was hyping it up, but at the same time, like, like, there was no way that she couldn't have won the band battle. It might have been like a funny twist, like if Grace did win, but Grace is like the generic bully character and you know, we can't have those winning, can we? I don't understand why she decided to do this whole circus subplot thing when she could have been elaborating more on Zalgo because Zalgo is obviously a very important part of the story because if he has a lot to do with her identity and why she is the way she is and we never figured out what happened to her demon self uh what the fuck was her name Nerissa we never figured out what happened to Nerissa you know and like Maybe that was all going to be explained in like a sequel, but I'm pretty sure that this is where the author like just stopped writing. Like she hasn't, I don't think she's written anything else like that I know of. I haven't done like that much research on it yet, but we never figured out, like we never got like this epic battle. Like I kind of, what I thought, what I really wanted to happen was to have Zalgo show up at the Battle of the Bands, like this big important thing. Have him show up at the Battle of the Bands and have Naomi like attack him and have her bandmates come in and attack him too. And then have her be like, hey, this is what I am. Uh, take it or leave it, but this is what I am. I've been trying to keep it from you guys to protect you, blah, blah, blah. Like it, it could have been something like that. Like that would have been redeemable at best. But I don't know. I feel like it's kind of, I feel like it was kind of stupid to like even involve like a whole like, I will like take your power and blah, like 
like not finishing that it, it was it was like a cop out and the fact that like you know Narissa like didn't come back to Naomi I feel like that was also kind of a cop out too <sighs> god where else? what else like what else do I even like say about this story other than the fact that like grammatically not the best but I'm pretty sure she didn't have an editor like the typefacing was all over the place. Like I'm not expecting a fan fiction with a self insert character, Mary Sue, to be an absolute work of art. And I'm not expecting somebody who's like 17 and edgy and into this kind of shit to be proficient at writing. Like I said, I admire the author's dedication to writing this. I, the most I have ever written in a story is maybe like 150 pages and Nisha Nicholson or M3 uh, managed to pull out 365 pages even though like most of that was filler that is really impressive and I like commend you like Nisha Nicholson I commend you for writing that much because that is very impressive especially at that age because holy fuck that's awesome however that being said 365 pages of stuff I feel like this story was like five different stories all at once because we have like the thing the subplot with Zalgo we have, you know, Narissa, we have Naomi going and killing people, we have the whole fucking annoying romantic subplot and the confusing love triangle between Naomi and Jeff, and Jeff being obviously mind controlled by Grace. We never fucking figured out why Grace was able to mind control Jeff either. That was never explained. Why? Was Grace a minion of Zalgo? Is that why she was being so horrible? Probably not. Grace is probably just the self inserts, you know, Grace is probably just like the bully character. Like Grace has no real reason for existing other than to be the bully. But there was a part in the beginning where she puts her hand on Jeff's shoulder and her eyes flash gold. And Naomi sees Grace in her dream in the very beginning, sitting on her bed as her like dream room catches on fire. So that pissed me off too, because we never figured out what the fuck was going on with Grace maybe the author forgot about that whole thing because it is common sometimes to kind of write things and then forget about them if you don't take notes or if you don't go back and read your own stuff but like I feel like that pissed me off like a lot that pissed me off like a whole bunch not knowing what the fuck was going on with Grace and why she even appeared in the first place like I expect like I expected her to be like a minion of Zalgo or maybe one of Zalgo's kids like in disguise like sent in as like a spy or something I don't know. All of this was just build up to the band battle. I understand that. Also just Naomi constantly getting hurt and having terrible judgment, like going off with Scarecrow Girl. I feel like the first book, if you go back and read the comments and you see me and my homie Peach T talking about this, we both agree that Naomi is a lot more like not likable but it's like I don't know she has she's basically just like <clears throat> I want to attack my bullies and I'm crazy and I'm a killer yada 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 and I don't know she's just a bit more she's less insufferable in like you know she's insufferable in the first book because it's just like everybody feed me and I hate my parents even though they're nothing but nice to me and nothing but kind and understanding to me and I love Jeff and blah 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 and in this book it's just sort of like also in the first book we got a lot more of Jeff's perspective and I wanted to see more of Jeff's perspective in this book but I feel like this book like again was like a self-serving fantasy and it's just wanted to be all about her and all about her development as a dark angel and all of her development as like a demon and a serial killer and stuff like that and whatever that's fine but in this book she's just I don't know just the way that she's written is just insufferable and I know that she's supposed to be relatable and like likable and stuff but it's really hard to like and relate to somebody who behaves in such a horrible way towards her friends and especially her behaving the way she did towards Maskey because she was just like one forgot that Maskey was her fucking boyfriend and I still I said I'm holding on to it like a grudge till the very very bitter end and it is the very bitter end right now so I'm still holding on to it huh <sighs> and the and like the whole bit with her being like masky you'll do this thing that you're that makes you obviously uncomfortable because you love me right like that is such an abusive emotionally abusive thing to say to somebody like you'll do this because you love me right it's just manipulative and coercive and it is not cute it is not a good look I like I hated Naomi more and more throughout the book just because of the way that she was acting and she was just being so fucking selfish and all that good stuff. There were not that many depictions of food in this book. There were a few, but there weren't that many. There weren't as many as there were in the first one. I like descriptions of food, but yeah. Also, 
we didn't get a description of what Naomi actually looks like, which brings into the question, are you supposed to project yourself onto this character? The only thing we know about her is that she is skinny and she doesn't like showing her stomach. We don't know what race she is. We don't know, you know, we know that she has, well, we know that she has black hair and blue eyes. But that's it. We have, she's skinny, black hair and blue eyes. Sea blue eyes to be precise. Also, I wanted to see more of Jane the Killer. I wanted to see her come into play and be a part of the gang and like fuck Jeff's shit up. I might have to write a bad, bad fan fiction about that because that would be amazing. I am mad that the thing with Zalgo never got resolved. I am mad that we never figured out what the fuck Grace was other than a bully. And yeah, this whole story was just all over the place, just very ham-handedly put together. I feel like the timing was off so much. And yeah, there were parts of it that I enjoyed, to be fair. Like there were parts of it that I enjoyed, like her like running through the woods and like trying to fight off Zalgo's kids. Like that part was kind of funny. First of all, I feel like you all know my feelings about this book, but I'm gonna say it again. Write as much fan fiction as you want. I love writing fan fiction. I feel like it is very fun. I like reading fan fiction. I like writing fan fiction. I like all kinds of fan made artwork, writing, videos, cosplay, all that stuff. Like do as much of that as you want. Like make it as self-serving, like self inserty like make it as just do all like do it like do all of that. Like I'm not discouraging creativity. The only thing I am discouraging is glorifying mental illness because you think it'll make you cool on Tumblr or something. Like it's cool to be psycho. Speaking as somebody who has clinically diagnosed, I have a new diagnosis now. I have a diagnosis of PTSD. I have major depression. I have severe anxiety and I have several obsessive compulsive habits. You've probably noticed in the, throughout the course of these videos me pushing up my glasses. It's just like a thing because they fall down my nose a lot. But I also scratch at my skin a lot. I scratch at my nose a lot. I, I have like this thing called a dermatillomania, which is the like the constant need to just pick at your skin. And if I can't pick at my skin because I'm on camera or I'm like somewhere else, I like fidget a lot. And that also has to do with the ADHD. But I will say as somebody who has several mental illnesses, and several things that go along with mental illnesses. It's not fun. It's not fun to be psycho. It is not fun to have a mental illness. It is not cool. Like, oh my God. I feel like I almost sort of acted like this in high school where I sort of took the fact that I had depression and made it as like a thing that made me like this tragic, dark, brooding, being because I had like this illness and nobody understood me and I was all alone and uh, and I kind of feel like that's what the author is doing here but having like having psychosis and having like that deep being at the level of like killing people and enjoying it it's not cool it's terrifying and I don't know how old Nisha Nicholson is now I think she might be like in her early 20s now but I real I hope that whatever she was going through, she has at least at least has it under control and is doing okay because reading a lot of this was kind of concerning. And like I said, if I ever find any of my bad fan fiction or any of my old like journals or whatever, I will be more than happy to read them on here because oh my god, a lot of them are so cringy. Especially like the Harry Potter stuff. Like not my immortal levels of cringe, but pretty cringe. But if I ever find those, I will, I promise I will read them. But yeah, I do not like the glorification of serial killers. I feel like she doesn't, the author doesn't have a good grasp on empathy, obviously. If she like write, writes her character like this. Yeah, I like the whole thing with serial killers is that watching movies about serial killers and studying them, I feel is one thing but like glorifying them and being like, this is so cool. Like I want to be a serial killer and like kill people who made me miserable. Like I don't like that. Like I, I feel like studying people who are at this level of psychosis or at this level of just like, you know, at the level that they're at, I feel like studying them and trying to understand how they got there and how they can be treated. That is one thing like clinical studies, like all of that. That's like one thing entirely, but this is like something else altogether that isn't healthy. <laughs> Again, also, I don't understand why people want to date creepypasta characters or why they like make them cute. Um, 
I see a lot of people cosplaying them on TikTok and stuff like that. And I like seeing people cosplaying as them. It's just that when they start like doing like the sexy Jeff the Killer, like it, it's just weird, like to me, like that just, you know, like whatever, whatever floats your boat, like whatever, that's fine, but not, not my scene. You can go enjoy that all you want. But like I said, I don't approve of the sexual sexualization or glorification of serial killers in any way, shape or form. But like I said, this is just my opinion. You do not have to agree with it. You please feel free to argue with me in the comments if you want, but that's my, that's my stance and I'm sticking to it. I finished the book. You all finished it with me. You all took this ride with me. I appreciate it so much if you've gotten this far. I know the last couple of videos were a bit slapdash put together, but I, the fuck? I wanted to finish it and move on to making other things. But at this point, I'm kind of like, what the fuck do I do now? <laughs> uh, I have a few other bad fan fictions saved. They're not nearly this long. They're like maybe a couple of chapters and I might read those. Um, they're also involving creepypasta characters, but uh, it's kind of hard to find self-insert creepypasta fan fictions that aren't like explicit. And I did, you know, take one for the team and I read a few of them and I'm just like, All right, that's that's a thing. All right, I don't want to read those on my channel because I don't, I don't, I'm not monetized. But if I read those, I feel like I would get my account would get banned and I wouldn't be able to get monetized. So I think that's it. I might make an addendum to this video, but yeah, that's it. That is the Welcome to the Mansion, a Jeff the Killer fan fiction by Nisha Nicholson. It is available on Amazon and I have the link in the description below. As again, um, I keep in each video description I do, I plug Jenny Nicholson's video where she reads the first book, which is wonderful. I watch it a lot. Yeah, so Jenny's, uh, the link to Jenny's video in the description below. Also John Wolfe's uh, link is in the description below. I like watching both of the videos because Jenny has such a wonderful and wry, just deadpan sense of humor. And I absolutely fucking love that about her. And John is just like, you guys are fucking scumbags. This isn't cute. Where are the adults? And I just, I love John Wolfe's videos. I love Jenny and John Wolfe very much. Like I recently discovered that uh, on John Wolfe's second channel, he and his girlfriend Kimmy did like a playthrough of all three Danganronpa games and I have watched all of them. Exactly. I have watched all of those videos several times. They are fucking works of art. Like I love them. And Jenny Nicholson also has a video <laughs> that my boyfriend and I quote a lot <laughs> called Trapped in an Island with Josh Hutcherson. And it was the first video that got me into her, into her channel. It was sent to me by my friend Eric. And it's, it's hysterical. Like I love, I love their channels very much. And watching them do these readings was like one of the things that like inspired me to like start doing these. And I'm glad that people watched it. Like it, this probably doesn't sound like much, but like the first video that I did in this series has like almost 400 views, which is like baffling to me. I literally did not expect anybody to watch this at all. So I'm rambling. Ah, uh, fuck. I almost don't want to stop talking, but I'm going to because my voice is starting to give out and I have so much fucking editing I have to do. I'm going to take a break from posting videos for a while. I'm not really consistent with uploading anyway, but I have, I have a TikTok. I'm very active on TikTok. I post there almost every single day. I do a lot of cosplay lip syncs and they're very cringy and they're very fun. And please go there, be my friend. My username is just mia.brujita. It's like the same thing as like my username here, just mia.brujita. Yeah, please come subscribe if you want. Watch me make a fool out of myself in different costumes. <sighs> yeah. As always, I love and appreciate every single one of you who take time out of your days to watch these videos. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful week weekend, whatever part of the day or week you're watching this video at, and I will see you all in the next one. Love you. Bye. I have one addendum to this. Hashtag Team Maskey forever. Whee!